so much for clicking on another video. I am super excited about today's video because in it I'm going to be showing you my brand new 5am morning routine. I have been fine tuning and developing this routine over the last year, year and a half um, and I feel like there are some really beneficial things in here. So I'm going to be showing you what I do do and maybe even more importantly the things that I don't do in the mornings. Um, I've got to admit I love a good morning routine. I genuinely think that it can change your whole life and I know that sounds dramatic but if you think about it bad mornings often become bad days and if our mornings become our days and our days become our weeks and our weeks become our months months become years and our years are our life right and um, so yeah, if there is a way to figure out how to start off your mornings consistently well with a routine, then I am all for it. And without further ado, I'm going to show you the way that I have been and will be starting my mornings for 2020. Enjoy. Sticking to a good morning routine it really depends on having a great evening routine. Um, I'm not going to go into that in this video, otherwise we'd be here forever. Um, but I just want to state that a great morning routine can't be perfected overnight even though it really does happen overnight and what I mean by that is that you need to get your eight hours sleep so getting enough sleep is key if you're trying to wake up at 5 a.m but still going to bed at midnight like you're just going to be sleep deprived so everything that I show you here is on the back of a good eight hours sleep and a decent evening routine which sets me up for the next morning so the first thing that I want you to notice is my super basic alarm clock so I have a really basic one function alarm clock and um, that sits on my side table I will put the link to this in the description box of this video it's from Amazon um, and what this means is that my phone, if you can see in the little far right corner, is on the desk under a little bottle of pills, which I will explain as we get into this video. But my phone is turned off and I do not use it as an alarm. I just use the alarm clock. Um, so my number one rule when it comes to alarm clocks is that I don't snooze anymore. I know that I used to say that snoozing gave me like a little micro victory and I felt really good being able to say, ha ha ha, no, 10 more minutes. I don't do that anymore because I've realised that actually that just can lead to you feeling really groggy when you wake up and kind of interrupting your sleep cycles. So what I do is that I just let my alarm ring out until I'm ready to face it um, and that just helps me to stop snoozing. So I haven't snoozed for maybe like a good five months or so. If you feel like you need to snooze or you need more sleep, that is because you didn't go to bed early enough. So again, back to step one of getting enough sleep. Um, now the very first thing that I do before I even turn off my alarm is that I take control of my thoughts. You'll see me here just like talking to myself. I don't always say these things out loud, sometimes it's just a thought. And this, I don't even know how to explain this as quickly, but I went through a patch about a year ago where I was just so hard on myself. I would wake up frustrated about the things I hadn't done the day before, already, you know, gutted about the things I was about to fail at during the day and just putting so much pressure on myself, just feeling negative, waking up with a negative mindset. And I was so over, I was so tired of it. So what I started doing was that as I wake up, the absolute first thing that I say is like, thank you, God. Thank you for seeing me through the night. Thank you for letting me wake up. And I just take control of my thoughts and my words and I set my mood for the day. No matter what happens in the day, I started off with an intentional, an intentional thought and um, that really helps, honestly. Uh, so then I turn off my alarm and I just drink some water. So usually I'll leave a bottle of water by the side of my bed. I just take a swig and that really helps me to stay hydrated, but also like to make myself more thirsty during the day. I don't know what it is. If I have a drink first thing in the morning, I tend to drink more water the rest of the day. It's like I've set my palate for the day. Um, so yeah, swig on a little bit of that uh, to really wake myself up. 
Then it is out of bed and I set about my first task, which is to make my bed. A super easy but super satisfying task. I've definitely learned that I am a visually keen person in terms of when things look good, I feel good. When things look in place and in order, I have a clearer mind. And so setting my bed just gives me a real like, yeah, you you smashed it, Sarah. It's, it's not even three past five and you've already accomplish something so I just make my bed look nice and tidy and pretty and um, to start the day then I usually turn on my fairy lights so you will find the link to these in the description box of this video they are from Amazon really affordable and I love them they give my room such a cozy glow especially when I've just woken up like I'm not a fan of super intense lights straight away so I ease myself in uh, with the fairy lights before allowing more significant lighting into my retina. Then we come on to the part of the day that I really love. Um, so I start off by reading my Bible. <laughs> so as you know, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus. And the first kind of content, I don't even want to call it content, that seems blasphemous. <laughs> thing I want to consume and hear is God's word and um, so I read my bible first thing in the morning usually I will actually only read a chapter and I say only because there can be this pressure to just read like you know 12 books a day or something but actually I find that when I'm really studying and meditating and considering what the bible says like it takes time so I take my time mulling over and meditating rereading verses and just really trying to hear what God's saying to me um, through his word and then after I've read my Bible, I grab my notebook and I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to tell you guys about this because it is, it is just life changing. I move on to this little journal of gratefulness, prayers, testimonies and daily intentions. Oh, I've been doing this for four months now um, and it, it is what it says on the tin really. I write down things that I'm grateful for and things that are testimonies, so answered prayers new prayer points and my intentions for the day and I was doing this because I kind of realized that we have a real tendency or at least I have a real tendency to you know idealize the future and long for the future wish for it you know glamorize the past and miss it but but living in the present it takes intention so this has really been helping me to be aware of the things that I'm grateful for because the more aware you are of the good things in your life the more you feel them and you live them and oh this has been life-changing and what I find is that even when things aren't really going so well because you know I don't yeah life happens <laughs> um even when they're not going well I find that my list of gratefulness just won't end it's like oh my goodness Sarah you need to slow down because I try to keep it to one side of A5 every day so that it only takes me like five minutes rather than being something that takes up a whole hour in the morning um, but there's just so much to be grateful for so as you can see by this little list it can be anything like from the sunshine oh I love a bit of sunshine to a comfortable bed to a roof over your head just all the little things that we're grateful for that we can take for granted and then I write down um, the testimonies so answers to things that I've specifically prayed for and um, I write down new prayer points so I pray for my family my friends uh, my patients at work and um, I pray for myself for my plans the things that I want to do um, and and then I write down my intentions. Now my intentions can vary, it can be how I want to be that day. So for example, be grateful, be helpful, be friendly, go the extra mile. Or it can be things I actually like literally want to get done. So um, going to work, filming this video, editing this video, things like that I will just scribble down. I try to keep it to no more than three or four things in the intentions bit. Um, but yeah, I find that uh, really helpful to just kind of gear me up for the day and then once I finished scribbling everything down and um, I pray about things so I go through the list from top to bottom and I just pray so I give thanks for all the things that I'm grateful for I just thank God for everything and um, I give thanks for the prayers that he's answered and you guys I can't even stress how many things have gone from my prayer list to my testimony list <clears throat> sorry just over the last Four months it is it's crazy it is actually so cool to be able to flick back and just see how much God is doing in my life and I'm, I'm so thankful so yeah I pray about things and I pray for the day ahead and for my intentions of the day it felt really weird leaving the camera rolling while I was praying by the way you guys but yeah <laughs> the things I do for y'all so anyway 
I finished that and I enter the main living area ready to get some K cows, some good old calories. Um, so morning coffee, oh, that's something to go in my gratefulness bit. So grateful for morning coffee. Um, so yeah, I make a coffee. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have seen me making some very fancy looking but very poorly skilled lattes with my cute little coffee machine. I don't do that every day. Every day, That's fake news. I actually do instant coffee because I don't have time for a fancy latte every morning. Um, and all my breakfasts are usually like 99.9. .9. Okay, that's an exaggeration. Like. 70% of the time I will have porridge oats for breakfast, usually they're plain um, and then I just use this ugh, glorious Nescafe Azira coffee, it's the best instant coffee that I've tried. Um, if you're thinking oh it's a bit more pricey, yep yeah, you're right, I buy it when it's on sale and it's half price and I just stock up. Um, so yeah I make my porridge, usually I'll just have it plain but today I was feeling a little bit, little bit saucy um, so I added some chocolate sauce and some peanut butter and just in case anyone's going to come at me for the way I want my porridge or the way I make my porridge you know no don't this this is how I like it I like it a little bit underdone I like it thick 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 <laughs> with some cold milk pulled on top so it's almost like a hot cereal and it's it's so so good by the way if you're gonna add peanut butter to your cereal or sorry porridge only add a tiny bit because it goes a long way anyway then I wash my face so I actually shower in the evenings and do my like main you know face cleansing in the evening so if you want a video on that just let me know in the comments um, but I just wash you know the sleep dust off my face um, and pat, uh, like pat it dry with a towel I really don't do anything more than that skin wise in the morning um, you can you know maybe there's more for me to do but actually this is working really well <laughs> so as you can see those are like old scars on my chin from previous spots but I haven't had new spots in quite a while which is cool um, so yeah I wash my face and then by this point, you're probably thinking, Sarah, how have you survived so long without your phone? And that brings me to my phone. So I keep my vitamin D tablets on top of my phone so that I never forget to take them. Because while I can forget to make up for the lack of sunlight that my melanin rich skin gets over a Welsh winter, I never forget to look at my phone. So by keeping my phone under the tablets, I always take those. And then I like to put on an audible book, so currently loving Trevor Noah's book, um, and I sit down to get ready for the day. Um, so I moisturize my face, I I do my makeup I eat breakfast at the same time now you might be thinking Sarah that is super eclectic and crazy like what but you know this this is real life honeys okay <laughs> sorry that was patronizing I didn't mean to call you honeys um but like I start work at 7 a.m I do not have time to be doing everything separately and oh my gosh this moment right here with my coffee oh, it's just happiness you know to so just sit in peace with a with a mug of coffee what a blessing, what a blessing. Anyway, so yeah, I do my makeup, I eat my breakfast at the same time. Um, you might be thinking why I've got that big old fancy dining room table if I eat at my dressing table. Um, and honestly, you're, you're not wrong. It, it, it is mainly for aesthetic purposes. I really actually sit there. <laughs> But that's okay, I'm okay with that. You know, there was a saying back in the day, better to arrive late than to arrive ugly. You know, a wise woman once said that. But actually, a wise woman once said, actually, better to get to work on time. So now I multitask. Um, then once I've done like most of my makeup, I brush my teeth uh, because by then I finished my breakfast. And I just, I'm not a fan of brushing my teeth um, before breakfast because then you're your, your food tastes weird um, and then I floss as well and also that just allows me to actually remove the breakfast debris um, and then I brush my lips which I love to do just before I put my lipstick on so I do all my other makeup apart from my lipstick I brush my lips so they're nice and soft and um, exfoliated ready for my lipstick to go on I then do my hair honestly I don't always curl it um, but when I do I enjoy the process um, I'm a big fan of volume. I pick out my outfit for the day, which when it comes to work is generally the same 10 outfits just recycled, but they're kind of cute outfits, so we're okay, we're okay. And this brings us up to around about 20 past six in the morning, which is when my alarm goes off on my phone. Um, so as you can see, it says lights, blinds, bowl, and <laughs> this is the most like, 
basic low skilled adulting tip ever but just I would always forget to turn my lights off or pull my blinds when it's dark in winter um, or put my bowl away in the dishwasher and um, so that means that I don't forget so that my plants actually get some daylight before I leave the house and I save money on bills because your gal is paying her own bills and you know I know we glamorize that but if anyone would like to volunteer just just let me know slide in my dms um and with that it is off to work to seize the day and i genuinely ah oh, i feel good from this morning routine and it's really helping me to be positive thank you so much for watching this video you guys i'm just gonna end it there um let me know what you think in the comments tell me about your morning routine and how you are tackling 2020 i would love to hear from you guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up i'll see you guys in my next one bye Waking up in my bed, just a stocking.